Welcome to the Island's True Crime Podcast, where we unveil the skeletons hidden beneath the sand. A true crime podcast for the Caribbean, by the Caribbean. It was a dreadful scene in the community of Leslieland on Monday afternoon after two men were viciously gunned down. One of the victims, 28-year-old Danny Shalmine, was taken to the Tapio Hospital following the shooting, where he was pronounced dead on arrival, while Selen Francis, also known as DJ Selu, succumbed to his wounds at the scene of the incident. Danny Charlemagne of St. Lucia Welcome to the Island Tales, where we dive into true crime. What went wrong? St. Lucia is surrounded by beautiful beaches, but the inner cities are plagued by slum dwellings, also referred to as ghettos. The people of St. Lucia are also in general very hospitable, generous, and easygoing. They are rarely found to constitute a federal nuisance. Over time, though, the country has changed to an almost unrecognizable culture of crime and gang violence. This holds true as a well-known new generation Don Danny Charlemagne was killed in his neighborhood. Disclaimer: We don't promote violence or any lifestyle that engages in illegal activity. We aim to use these cases to bring awareness to the youngsters across the Caribbean and show them what certain choices that were made in life can lead to. On the 21st of December 2020, it was a very dreadful scene in the community of Leslie Land Costries. Two men who were shot dead at Leslie Land Costries on that Monday at about 5 p.m. Selen Francis, a 23-year-old popular DJ around the city who was well on his rise, and the neighborhood's community leader, Danny Cat. But before we get to the end, let's go back to the beginning. Danny was born in the inner city community of Leslie Land Castries, a neighborhood known for its breeding and harboring of criminal elements, but was also known for its love and caring atmosphere where one can borrow sugar from a neighbor and one can drop their kids off at anyone's house to go run errands. Danny's mom was well known in this neighborhood and his father was a respectable man. Danny first attended the St. Aloysius R.C. Boys Primary School, where he then went on to the Entrepot Secondary School. During this period of his life, he was known to be a bit troublesome, smoking some weed and getting into small troubles, but nothing too serious. It was when he moved to high school he took his true form. He dropped out of school in about grade 9 and embarked on his full-time career of being what is locally termed as bad man. He built a reputation for himself around the name Danny Cat. Before we get too far, you might want to ask why the nickname contains a cat, or what kind of cat. According to a source online, he is called a cat because indigenously and generally, cats are wise and swift. So, because of his quick-witted decisions and smart moves, they nicknamed him a cat. He became well-known for his fearlessness and his willingness to go on any hit or mission. One of his likable traits was that he had always been a pro at things he has devoted his time to do. And to be fair, he was loved by his people. The people would always stand up to defend him on many occasions. And at other times, the populace would be the ones to rally around and support him. As someone who grew up in the streets, it would be expected that he is uncouth, unplanned, uncultured, or maybe have no vision. But this young man differs from this stereotypical classification. He was a fairly clear-headed man who knew what he wanted and how to go about it. He saw a future for himself and had been working towards it before his life was abruptly cut short. He, unlike many street stand-ups, has no criminal record. Or, to correct this statement, there are no instances where he has been convicted of any crimes. He was clean and has always been. Well, maybe not as clean as his police record may show. Danny Cat had quite a reputation for being a senior in the streets. Fucking pepper, if you're busy, bring all them niggas, you know? Bring all the niggas out of the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck shit up. Gang shit, man. He frequented two spots, his home neighborhood and Grass Street. The two neighborhoods were in a long-standing feud against another rival turf, Wilton's Yard. We are unsure why the feud began, but it amplified after the death of Danny Cat's older brother, Kakoa, who was rumored to have been killed due to his blood affiliations with Cat. In 2009, Cat was arrested and imprisoned for possession of a firearm. Upon his release from his 2009 arrest, he found himself in a near-death accident, 
that left him partially crippled in the leg. The insurance proceedings from that accident were the funding he needed to secure his position, and from there he went on a complete offensive attack on his enemies. <laughs> This war left many young men dead on both sides, until today no one can claim a victory. This also led Katz to be jailed in 2015 under the charge of causing a death. He sat in jail for a few years till the opportunity came to claim his freedom, and that he did. Danny was released on special conditions that he and all the rivals around Castries Basin would make a peace pact where no more blood would be spilled. He was bailed out by his main rival, which was a shocking turn in events, leading many to believe that he had turned a new leaf. He found himself involved in the Safe Space Community Program, a free girls program that provides the opportunity for girls aged 13 to 19 to learn about their sexual and reproductive health, leadership and career, and openly express themselves in a safe, confidential and non-judgmental environment. Participants that have concerns relating to sexual assault can access resources and mentorship at the girls' space. As a street, relating to the outlook, values, or lifestyle of those young people who are perceived as composing a fashionable urban subculture, he is a respected personality. Danny led the kids in his community in this initiative funded by Bank of St. Lucia and Rise Inc. Now we have gotten to the crossroads, and this is where things get a bit more interesting. Being freshly released from jail, being in a position of leadership in a heavily funded youth program, what exactly could have gone wrong? Was it a mistake? What's the story behind someone who seemingly turned a new leaf? Well, rumor has it that on Kat's release from a three to four year bid in jail, he came out to see many of his juniors being in positions of power and dominating on the streets where he once had to hold their hands and protect them from. It all started on the day that an individual who was affiliated to the now infamous OTF Chopper City 5150 gang was hanging out in the Leslie Land area when police conducted a stop and search resulting in most people fleeing the hangout spot. On his return, the now identified individual by the name of Cooley realized that the illegal firearm that he had hidden or in local slang had based was missing. It seemed strange to him that in a place where he felt safe and trusted his peers, that something like a gun could go missing. He called the leader and pleaded for the return of his goods and was promised that the matter would be dealt with. After multiple tries, the said individual, Cooley, became frustrated and decided to visit the neighborhood where it is alleged that he offloaded a firearm and walked out. If you are familiar with the streets, then you would know this was a big no and consequences and punishments would be administered. Cooley, as we mentioned, was an affiliate of the gang and was a street soldier under one of the OTF gang's capos, who went by the name of Zoom Boy. Zoom Boy was one of Cat's top capos or lieutenants and was one of the heads whilst Cat was in jail. He had later branched out to his own thing and started his own crew, but was forever loyal to his once boss, Cat. This is where the plot thickens. Getting back to the story, it is rumored that after Cooley decided to shoot up the block, Cat was furious and called Cooley's boss Zoom Boy to a meeting. It is alleged that Zoom Boy was at the fisheries in Castries and hopped on his bike and went into the Grass Street area. Upon arriving at Grass Street, he parked his bike and moved to the slums, a nickname given to the Leslie Land area. Witnesses state that he was met by Cat near the entrance, and within three minutes, two to three unknown assailants walked up and shot him in his head and all over his body. This incident occurred two months before Cat met his demise. Stevie Sharma, aka Zoom Boy, was pronounced dead on the scene on the early evening hours of October 12, 2020. The same day that his soldier Cooley retaliated for a missing gun, he died literally hours later leading many to suspect some involvement by the OTF crew. 
This sparked outrage among the communities in Castries, seemingly witnessing an internal war between the members of the OTF gang and bringing police presence into the neighborhoods who had been actively practicing peace. The killing of Zoom Boy started a bloody feud where the retaliation was almost instantaneous. Cat and his close affiliates no longer stayed and lingered in the neighborhood. But on the weekend of October 17th, Cat, his girlfriend at the time, and one of the alleged killers in the Zoom Boy murder, Ali, also known as Small Boy, arrived in the OTF headquarters. Within minutes of their arrival, whilst Cat visited his mom, Small Boy decided to visit his children, who lived in Grass Street, literally across the street, but was greeted with a barrage of bullets, leaving him dead on the scene. It is said that Cat dropped to his knees in horrors and surely considered that it could have been him. After this, Cat went almost underground, moving in unmarked vehicles and avoiding any public places as much as possible. He had found himself in a place of paranoia and regret. As times passed and tensions seemed to have calmed down, Cat started to show out more, even attending a birthday celebration of his right-hand lieutenant, Jalil Hunt, alias Jelly Boy. The days started lovely with festivities and even an inflatable swimming pool for the kids and women. Music polluted the air, and the fragrance of marijuana could have been smelt from miles away. It seemingly was a lovely day where everyone was relaxed and not as vigilant as the norm. Danny arrived at his neighborhood with his girlfriend and newborn son. His girlfriend and newborn son proceeded to go to his mother's house, whilst Danny sat amongst his minions, rolling a blunt, or in local terminologies, a joint. Within minutes of him finding his resting spot, an unknown car slowly reversed into the yard, where witnesses said that Cat alerted to one of his boys to go check out who was in the car. A lone gunman, who was clearly recognizable to the people of the neighborhood, gently walked in and proceeded to offload his pistol into Danny Cat, then turned around, walked back to his car, and drove off like a scene from a movie. Everyone at the scene ran for cover, leaving one young man who was holding his kid to fire a few shots in the direction of the car. It was said that there were many people there that day, including Danny Cat's three daughters and his girlfriend who ran to the block for cover on hearing the gunfire. It's also alleged that she locked eyes with the killer and he didn't shoot after anyone else or claimed any unnecessary casualties, which showed that this was a marked hit and the gunman had one target in his eyes. Lo and behold, the shooter was identified as the infamous Cooley, the same person where it all started from. It is claimed that he was the lone trigger man behind all the retaliation shootings and vowed that he would have killed everyone who was involved in Zoom Boy's shooting. It also came out that on the day of Zoom Boy's death, the same day that Cooley walked in and opened fire, that his targets were allegedly Jelly Boy and Small Boy. Jelly Boy survived the entire ordeal, but as of this recording, he was killed on the 4th of November 2022 in a completely different altercation. On Monday at about 5.20 p.m., two men identified as 23-year-old Selen Francis and 28-year-old Danny Danny Cat Charlemagne succumbed after being shot multiple times at Leslie Land Castries. The family of Selen Francis received news that would change their lives forever. 21-year-old Francis, who was more popularly known as DJ Silo, and 28-year-old Danny Shalman were fatally shot in Leslie Land Castro. This killing sent shivers down the spine of many residents of the area, and this made most areas almost deserted in broad daylight, as people continued to fear for their life. A goal turned deadly when gunmen indiscriminately opened fire in Shalman's direction. It was also said by people around him that all he wanted was a better community for his children, a place where his children can feel safe. Dr. Stephen King, one of the co-founders of Safe Spaces, said Danny was one of our safe space generals. He was a key member of Safe Space. He was a loving father, and his spirit is here to deal with us. He loved his children and only wanted to make Leslie's land a safe space for children to grow. That was one of his motivations for Safe Space with friends and family members still mourning his death one year to the day he was The case of Danny Cat was reported to the RSLPF on Tuesday, the 22nd of December 2020. It was entered into the records around 5.15 p.m. that day. It was after the report that the police swung into the investigation. 
At the time, they had been dead for more than 24 hours. No record of the autopsy was found, but it was established and confirmed by the police that they had died in a gunfight, and he had been shot alongside his friend Selen, who was a DJ. The event of the day, Danny was killed. As narrated by the DJ's mother, was explicit enough. In an interview with the mother of the DJ, the events wore a new light as more light was shed on the backstory and what might seem to be the reason for the clampdown and homicidal murder of the two young men. Danny's DJ friend Selen Francis is described by his mother to be an easygoing and hardworking young man. She said she had always loved him and felt the pain of losing a son. She lamented the death of her son with utmost passion. My son is only 21 years old. He was still a baby to me. That crushed me. That had me traumatized. She continued by explaining that her son had never given her a headache. She doesn't have to worry about where her son is. Anytime he is not around, he is just doing his DJ at street parties. Francis worked as the DJ in a radio station and also as the DJ for street parties and events before he was filled with bullets from a gun. The grieving mother used the opportunity of the interview to appeal to the youth populace to renounce senseless violence and constitute a nuisance. She said, Sometimes some things happen and you don't even know when you're dead or when you are wounded. So just be careful and be your person. All I am asking the youths of today is just to be careful. She got emotional to have realized that she had lost her first son to the incident. She was shocked when she woke up in the morning and realized her son is gone forever and she won't be seeing him anymore. The grieving mother also seized part of the time to call on the police, government, and all other authorities to find a quick and lasting resolution to the cause of the violence. I hope justice is served. I hope the police do their job and I hope everything goes okay about my son. I know my son is innocent and I know my son is not gang related. I know that for sure and everybody that knows my son knows that is not violent. He is loving, quiet and very respectable. The indiscriminate and sporadic shooting that took place in the community that eventually took the life of the two was not a coincidence. The report has it that other individuals too were wounded along the same line. Danny is said to have been involved in various peace forums, groups and communities to restore balancing peace to the community. The superintendent of crime management in the area, George Nicholas, has said that Selen was not being pursued by police at the time of his death. This implies that the primary target was Danny, and Selen might just have been collateral damage. The whole community turned out for the burial of the young man, who has dedicated his life to finding a lasting solution to the long-lasting violence in the community. Though many do not agree with his methods, they all had something in common that they could agree on, and that was his intention. He has good intentions and whatever he was fighting was in the good interest of the residents of all the residents. They were all out for his funeral, which was a loud one. Social media YouTube was used to cover the event, and it was indeed a sight to behold. Various people who came to pay tribute were there as the people all wore long faces. People wrote many tributes on social media posts that declared the unsung hero of Leslie gone. Some of them read thus, Danny, you saved me from me. You rescued me from my loneliness. You were the first person to accept me for who I am. Never cut me off. You kept trying to get closer to me. You could have justifiably come at me with hatred. Even though I tried to break that bond myself, you're the person in this world that I could call my one and only true friend. People call you Souza, but you will always be Danny to me. I miss you, Danny. Long live Danny. I am linking from the UK. Save spaces, keep on with this brilliant project. Don't give up. You will be massively respected by communities and the governments you say you are spiritual soldiers and you never die. Keep the pressure on government ministers and show them that you are for real and not to be taken lightly. Develop a uniform that your members wear. Collect donations. Get government grants. Don't give up. I love you, Danny. My heart goes out to his newborn who would have no memory of his dad and won't remember how much his dad loved him. Fly high with the angels, my mob. You was a real brother to me. 5150. Let's teach emotional intelligence and problem resolution to the current youth 
to avoid a case like this in the future. Let's start by creating better environments for our kids so they don't get influenced by thugs, wars, and guns. Condolences to the family of Danny, Danny Cat Charlemagne, and Selen DJ Salo Francis. Please, people, let's find a way to reduce crime.